Welcome back, everybody. We have an old favorite, not in years, but in <laughs> tenure. We have an old favorite that we brought back, Janet Price of JP Coaching and Consulting. Glad to have you back, Janet. Thank you, Judith. Always fun to have conversations with you. Yes, and from sunny Malibu. I, I like that <laughs> even more. So there are two reasons why we're going to be speaking to Janet. She has this program that is phenomenal. It's called the Atlas Program for Co-Parents. We'll go th through that in a second thoroughly because I love this, Janet. I really love this. You have so many programs, but I love this one a lot. The additional reason why Janet is here is because we both belong to the Amicable Divorce Network. The Amicable Divorce Network is a group of family law people in California as one of the many states that it's in committed to not litigating and to working out whatever piece of your divorce we're in, we're, uh, uh, working with you on peacefully. Now, just a little genesis on this. Tracy Ann Moore Grant, a Georgia attorney in Athens, I believe, right? Right, Janet? She's in Athens, yeah. So she's in Athens. She's been a litigator for a million years. She belongs to a larger firm. And then one day, a few years ago, she said, I'm done. I'm not litigating. This is not the right way to handle family law. If at all possible, the court is there for the really dire cases, but most cases are not the really dire cases. They're just people who are mad, haven't gotten over it yet, haven't gone through the emotional divorce so they could get to acceptance and forgiveness, which is the ultimate. And so Tracy said, no, I want to be the leader in every state in the country through the Amicable Divorce Network. I want to establish a group of people in each state that residents can access just by going on the website and choosing the various people uh, for various options and services. Janet is one of them. I am one of them. And this is this is great. So, so Tracy's making her way around the country and we are representing California, California in the house. Yep. Way to go. Absolutely. To go. And I believe that Janet is a real Olympian at <laughs> coaching. So we have the Olympics in town, not in town, <laughs> we have the Olympics on TV. But uh, yes, we're doing the Olympics and Janet is a true Olympian. She, she'll help you win at being amicable co-parents. So here's what I find fascinating. It's court approved. Janet, before I go through all the tenets of this, how did you get this court approved? What do you what does it take to be court approved? Mm -hmm. So um each court system, and I'm talking about California right now, because that's the monster that I took on at the moment. Um each county has their own source of resources, and some counties um, to help families who are going through the courts. And so the program that I offer is called Atlas Path Towards Peaceful Co-Parenting. And I reach out to all of the counties and the family court services or the appropriate department within the family courts to ask for uh, if they had an application process, essentially. So there's um, somewhat, I think it's 58 counties in California. Don't quote me. I'm pretty sure that's the right thing. I forgot the number. And um, at the moment, th there are um, Atlas is on the provider referral list in 14 of those counties. The uh, Many of those other counties do not have um, a referral list at all that they go to. Some of those counties have an internal process that is for families, orient them, here's our process. If you're filing for custody and or divorce, watch these videos and that's what they have to offer. So, so um, once you get, okay, so when you're dealing with the counties that do have a referral network for, for various options in services, then what do you do? You write up your program, you submit it to the courthouse, 
Oh, so if they had, I, I actually had to apply for each of those counties and, and it's an annual application to reapply oh. and submit licensures um, and insurance background and the program content and they evaluate how I measure success for the parent, for the parents that participate. Oh, that's so, cool. um, yes. That okay, is so you measure so we success. That process. So yes. Janet, um, obviously anything, any service offered in the courthouse means there's serious stuff going on with the parties who are filing. Hmm. That's right. Well, and, um, so how this program actually works, because I have reached out to attorneys who do support clients um, that use the court system. Um, I've reached out and said, if, you're, if your clients need support or co-parenting education, this would be a program, whether it's ordered by a judge whether it's me, uh, whether it's agreed upon mutually that the parties are going to do this, or whether you attorney thinks it's wise strategically for your client to go through this program, here um, it's a twelve-hour program where there's a certificate at the end that can be then turned into the court that says, "I said parent participated in twelve hours of this program," so. Um, those are all the methods that an individual um, may come through or reach out to me to um, begin participating in this program. Janet, I am so impressed that you got this through 14 courthouses. I really am. Thank you. That's, that's amazing to me. And just to have that stamp of approval is beyond. So Good for you. I've known you for, I forget how many years. You have always moved forward to increase your knowledge, to increase your services, and everything is for the betterment of the family and very child-focused. So hats off to you. Thank you. Thank you Let, so much. All right. Let's talk about this program now. Yes. Hold on. I wanted to read something at the, at, at the top of your uh, flyer. Life is too short not to enjoy peace and harmony. I love this phrase. Being in conflict with your co-parent is no fun for you or your children. I mean, yes, these are obvious right. things that we kind of forget in our anger, right? And our justice seeking. Right. And then let's see, don't be held back. Your lives are worth more. So yes, you have set everybody up beautifully because people argue, people are hurt, people are going through the emotional divorce. If there are no children, it's hard enough. That's right. But if there are children, you kind of have to stop your own grieving or put your grieving in another container somewhere so you can be child focused. Please start with, is there one step that's completely crucial for you to get parents to understand and to show them how to put their grieving somewhere where they can deal with it on their own and not in front of their child? Mm. Um, I, the one thing that I think is very different from most individuals who offer co-parenting support, training, education, counseling, et cetera, is that I fundamentally believe when parties come to the place where they're divorcing, whether they both agree or not, the communication is broken down. Thus, it is not fruitful to have the both parents in the same room. So what is unique about Atlas is that only one side of the party, one parent or the other, is participating in the cohort, the program, at a time. So if they both want to take it, one takes it one month and the next takes it the next month. And what this does is create a safe environment for each parent to actually hear and digest the information that's being presented in an emotionally safe space 
where they can actually explain why they're so frustrated, why they're so sad, why they're so angry. So the emotional divorce side of it, they're able to get it out in a con safe container. And I can help them shift that energy to be child focused by things such as, and how do you think your child would feel if they heard that? How coming from your mouth, how do you think it feels to be in your child's shoes when they see you crying all the time? How might they feel? How do you think your child might feel when all they see is your frustration and anger every time you're getting ready to go to the other parent, the transition and going to the other parent's house. How do you think that makes them feel? Those are just examples. Um, I would say when you ask one thing, it's that fundamental, both parents are not in the same program. That is the biggest shift in I agree. anything. I, I agree because uh, other programs that I've looked at and, and talked to people about, they are in the same program. I think that's very interesting that you set this up to be individual. Additionally, and this, I marvel at this, by the way. So the container is a Zoom container every, and you have many different parents on this Zoom call, yes. which is also rather interesting because in my experience it's very difficult to get parent different parents together in the same room there's embarrassment there's uncomfortableness and it's hard it seems to get the how have you managed to do that so the program is limited to 10 participants every month so that's the size of the the container on zoom and um another piece of this is I too was once one of these parents. So I also was ordered to do co-parenting type courses in my past. And so I, from that, knows what works and doesn't work. And I set this up for to be two hours every night for six days in a row. So let's just rip the Band-Aid off, get the pain off. So from that mindset, parents like the idea that we are 12 hours, we're getting it done all in one week. It's on Zoom. It's after I've given my children dinner for two hours while they're watching a movie or something. And we're, so I think that is one way when you ask, how do I get people in the room? That is one specific, I designed it intentionally for that reason. Two, what's quite interesting is, um, I have homework reflection items that I ha give people to think about. They don't have to turn it in. And we start with that the next day. And I bring examples if they don't come to the table and um, put them on the hot spot, shall we say. Um, my previous career was actually teaching and educating and consulting. So I'm comfortable navigating this type of Zoom type environment. So I, I seek to bring out the conversation within individuals. Okay, so that, that's great. I love this. I love this. So let me go to some things that I highlighted mm -hmm. that I thought were really cool uh, uh, aspects of this program, and I wanted you to address them. In the program, you identify divorce abuse. What is divorce abuse? Mm, thank you so much for asking that because there's so many different ways that the divorce impacts the children. And so simply put, um, it's not the divorce itself or parents, if they were never married, the separation of the relationship itself that impacts children to the level where they are traumatized or have lifelong impact because of their parents' experience. It is certain elements um, that will stick with children 
provide and and that is where we get to their aces that are talked about in um the long lasting impact and divorce being one of them on the happiness and health emotional health for children so divorce abuse is essentially those things that parents do that begin that impact children to traumatize or impact or create ace trauma aces for the children and it's there's top 10 things that I walk through that really begin to impact a child's mental outlook, emotional stability, sometimes even physical um, stability. Can you give us a couple? Mm -hmm. um, conflict of any kind, first of all, that that the children feel above all is a big umbrella, right? So the conflict... It's okay for you and I to have a difference of opinion. We all do. And children can learn that their parents have different opinions. It's when the conflict brings escalated, unmanaged emotions, screaming, you know, so anything you can think of, of screaming and yelling, bad mouthing, all of that, um, and being open. So our children are the best private little detectives in the world, particularly for each of their parents. And while we may think that we're behind doors screaming and yelling at our co-parent, they hear us. While we think that yeah. we're just texting and it's okay because they're not reading the text, they have read our body language to know we must be texting with their other parent based on our body language. Really? So being very careful, right. Wait and a minute. So, Stop right there. I want you to expand on that. Seriously? Oh gosh. I you I mean read body we, the children children just there's nothing. I mean they learn this if you think about it. Children um from the time they were born, they have to read each of their parents in order to get their needs met. So they are so they are the most in tune. I mean they need to teach they need to know how to get each parent to tell each individual parent, I'm hungry. Otherwise they'll starve. I'm wet. I'm, I'm really, they know each parent better than anybody else. Wow. And so because of that, they can, they don't know it intellectually. They just know it intuitively in their subconscious. I can right? understand that. Yeah, because I'm thinking, okay, so when we are texting somebody back, we could be a passenger in a car, we could be sitting at a restaurant, and depending on the emotional value of the of the conversation going back and forth in text, I guess our body does take a stance if we're angry, as opposed to, oh, okay, cool, we can meet later. You know, that's a very different body. I guess you're right. That's a very different body language. Yep. Yep. Cool, Janet. That's really, really cool. Um, okay. So you did list a few things about divorce abuse, emotional abuse. Another thing, understand the harm of using your child for emotional support. Talk about that a minute. Um, right. So this ends up being very, very damaging to children. There's lots of components of the emotional support. So it's um, the most extreme would be when we have a role reversal where the child end up feeling, whether the parent is intentionally or unintentionally doing this, where the child ends up feeling as though they must care for their parents' emotions or their parents will crumble their parents will not be stable. Their parents will not be able to go out into the world. I mean, lots of different and what will happen if they don't. It puts them in the role of adult and the parent in the role of child, which is stealing childhood from children. Mm -hmm. So that's in the highest level. I mean, there's lots of details of what that looks like and how that shows up. Um but that, I would say, is the best way of describing it in a brief manner. No, that's good. Um, Janet, disengage 
I mean, there's just so many points here. I can't tell you. Go on Janet's website and you'll see what I'm talking about. We'll give you that information in a minute. But here's another one I highlighted. Disengage from their former spouse and realign as co-parents. That is a distinctive change. Please address that. Super distinctive. I believe, Judith, the emotional divorce that you're talking about is absolutely the case, no matter if you have children or not. Absolutely. And when you have children, the children go through a grief cycle as well. So because of the loss of the intact family and all that, when you are an individual that doesn't have children, pretty much once all the documents, the financial, everything's done with the divorce, you're done. You can choose to never ever talk to this individual again and move forward your life and never have to deal so some people might cope by actually putting those emotions into a closet in their body and never processing all the other way through just pushing them down when you are a parent that can't it's just can't possibly happen and so because you will for sure be engaging them with them till your children are 18. And then it really is for the rest of your life. You've got graduations, college graduate school, you have weddings, you have grandchildren, you have lots of events that you will continue to be engaging, maybe not at the same level, but you will be engaging with your co-parent. So, I think that individuals think that when they're a parent, I'm divorcing, somebody's going to give me this parenting plan, and that's it, and now we're co-parents. The problem with that idea is they have never disconnected emotionally from the communication cycle and the loop that they were in that got them to the divorce in the first place. They've just moved to another house, and they're still repeating the same emotional dance and communication cycle that they did while they were married. And so that's the disengaging and the resetting up of brand new skills that are the co-parenting skills that are required. And, and you don't know about this until you're taught this. That's what's crucial. Right. And until you're there. And so as you were talking, I'm thinking, you know, this is really, really great information because <clears throat> you have to redefine your new role. And here's what I mean. I'm going to give a very simple example of that. Um, in any relationship and you're, while you're living in the same house, we all have different skills and talents. We all have different behaviors in the house. Some Somebody likes to cook. Somebody likes to do uh, the dishes. Believe it or not, I was the one that liked to do the dishes. Um, and one parent will say to the other parent or one spouse will say to the other spouse. Now, don't forget, if you don't get this done now, it'll affect something happening later. You know, they're they're guiding. They're taking on part of the responsibility uh, that the other parent has to get something done, whether it's to get a smog check whatever it is to get out of that role is really hard because I see it when I'm mediating divorces and that is one parent will start answering questions that I'm asking the other parent or they will say well I told you didn't remember now when this has to happen and I'm like no that role has to change you're no longer responsible for getting the smog check done that's if they forget right. it, they forget it. You only learn by forgetting sometimes. So, you know. That is absolutely right. And there are two things that happen in that role change. One, I believe the parent who maybe is more used to doing all those reminders and sweeping up may tend to also be the more hands-on active parent in the couple's relationship. So the initial shift of two households instead of one, that parent oftentimes begins to feel a sense of, oh no, 
is everything going to be okay? Are my children going to be taken care of? The other parent has never done blah, 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 blah. So there's a natural sense of, I don't want to put a label on anxiety, fear, or whatever you want to say. It's a newness is what I want to reframe it. It's new. It's new for both parents. The parent who's never done it may have a, a little bit of nervousness. And the parent who's always done may also have a little bit of nervousness. It's just a change and both parties need to be allowed to actually step into that role and go through that change, right? So when they're first transitioning, that is a part where there can be all this conflict, Judith, that you've talked about. These emotions go higher due to that. The more interesting item is parents and they oftentimes come back and say, what do you mean, Janet? I thought that's what I was supposed to be doing. And that was this separation and disconnecting. I basically define it as when you're married, you are in each other's inner circle, right? When you divorce, even though you have children, you are actually no longer in each other's inner circle. Yes. And the fact that you do share children together does not mean you're in each other's inner circle. You have somebody else, maybe your sister, your mother, your best friend, and then eventually maybe a new relationship that's in your inner circle. It is not your co-parent. And people look at me and go, what? But that's the other parent. Yes, that is the other parent. It's a new relationship that you reframe differently and it's not your inner circle and that when they get that that's when the disengaging comes in okay and let me add let me see if i really do get this i love that example the circle you're in are your children's lives so you have the two parents okay now you've disengaged you're not in the same house you're not in each other's circle you're here but the kids are right here. This is where you meet in the middle to talk about the kids, not about how each other is living their lives. Is that what you mean? That's exactly right. And when I'm talking about, right, the two adults, the inner circle usually is safety, trust, sharing all our intimate information, all that. When you go out and you stay just child-centered, now you just are addressing facts versus feel your feelings. It's the children and the facts and organizing what's going on between them. Um, and that's it, right? Your feelings don't have a place in this co-parenting relationship. Yes. And little comments like, oh, that's what he always used to do. Mom talking about dad or dad. See, I used to tell her about this when we, you can't do that, right? Cannot do that. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. You are not in charge. Right. Honor the divorce rules. That's another one of your tenants in this program. Honor the divorce rules. How do they not honor the divorce rules? Um. So when it's really the divorce and the parenting roles. So I think as, as we separate and be, begin confidently living the two households, um, then naturally many times we want to bring others into our lives and it's ensuring that we bring others in, into our lives in a manner that supports the two households, one family ideology. So I like that you said inner circle and you said the children are in the middle. Um, I have an Im image visual that I created that actually has two rings. Um, and when they're married, they're overlapping. So that's where the children come in of the two marriage rings kind of overlapping, if you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Um and now when you're separated uh, and then living in two households, those two rings are touching, but not overlapping any mm. longer. And the children become a third ring where they intersect with each of their parents. 
So essentially that's the divorce. If that is the foundation for children to start with, this is our family. This is now how our family looks. Mm-hmm. Our, my two parents are my base, my roots for my growth of if I'm speaking from a children's mind and they believe that their parents are their base and then everybody that is alongside their parents is connected to each of their parents and is more like the branches of a tree. That's Mm -hmm. how I think about it. So honoring the divorce roles, that's what I mean when I say that. Oh, but it's written rules, R-U-L-E-S here, not roles. And the rules are, so that the roles and rules, meaning essentially dad's going to be the leader in dad's house. When the children are with dad, dad's the leader. The rules, dad gets to lead. Mom can't backseat drive from the other household like we were just talking about. Yeah. Okay. So Mm -hmm. those sorts of things. Janet, I... I really do like the fact that you deal with parents individually because I can't imagine the arguing that would go on and the the facial expressions uh, if they are there and they still have so much stuff to work out emotionally. So I think that's really super cool. When did you realize that it was better to deal with the parents individually? Did something take place that made you start thinking that way um well personally my own journey of doing marital couples therapy and and then watching how that worked um and in the workplace watching teams when I was leading my first career, when I was leading change in the business world and having to help a group of 15 people come up with a new way of doing things for their department, change is hard. And so even then it, I worked through that in a various, various manners, including one-on-one conversations with the members of the team, as well as group team meetings. And I found when you could mix one-on-one with team, you gathered more support. You understood where the other side came from, and you could wrap that into the conversation. So when I became, you know, walked into this coaching space for divorce, co-parenting and parenting, I really decided that I would only work with one side at a time. So it's never been something that I've done together. So this is an extension for the reasons of each person has their own value system. So the idea is to help each individual grow from where they are starting and see their perspective and help them reach just a little bit further and stretch in their own mind. Everybody needs a little bit of nudging to help them stretch. So are you saying, I'll say this in a different way, are you saying that if you take parents individually and put them with other individual parents, they might learn by hearing another parent that they're not connected to at all express some of the challenges and issues that they're that the the listening parent is going through in their lives and can accept it differently because they're not personally involved with that other parent yet it's parent stuff everybody's talking about parent stuff and like this team and change um you're in a team of people made up of individual parents and you have very similar experiences that you're going through, but you have more of an open mind when you're listening to somebody that's not, that hasn't been previously attached to you and that you might still be mad at. It's absolutely true. In fact, that what you just said was proven about a year ago in one of my cohorts that I did where, um, 
in that cohort, there were two individuals, a mom and a dad specifically, that were mirror images of each other. So the mother's experience was exactly the same as the dad's counterpart woman. So if that makes sense. And the mother that was participating in the program had a very similar emotional experience to the dad that was in the pro uh, to, to, or the mother that was in the programs, other parent, um, she was experiencing hit. He, her experience was very similar to the gentleman that was in my class. If that makes sense. I'm, I'm trying to. And yeah. so it first came, they both of those individuals had huge things that they needed to, um, overcome the woman the mother was experiencing so much sad and loss of being left by her other parent that she was so angry she believed that her child did not deserve to see the other parent conversely the father in the experience was the one that ended the relationship and was experiencing the battle of being cut out of their his child's lives but do through false accusations over and over and had been in the court system for about six years and had not seen his children for about four of those six years so his children were a little bit older um, than where her child was, but essentially they were replaying the story right there. And in those 12 hours, six days, he was actually able to see where his co-parent was coming from in the anger and rage more than he was ever able to see in the past because he was hearing it. In the same way, the, the mother was actually able to see how damaging to the children, because this gentleman was explaining all of the rigmarole the children had to go through in these six years in order for this, and how devastating it was for the entire family when a parent is cut out of a child's life. And so she softened and was able to see why she was able to see a, a dad who loved the children immensely. And so she was softened and was able to open up that she was going to find a way to allow her child to see the other parent. So that happened in one 12 hour session and it just blew my mind. I was so happy. That's, you know, that that's phenomenal. What you're describing is parental alienation, which of course is the worst ever. Um, and your program, I can see, addresses parental alienation without actually using those two words and um, mitigates it measurably. And from the very beginning. Yeah. And that is essentially yeah. the impact is, a, uh, and, and the intention is helping parents shift to understand the way divorce actually impacts children so that the children are free to love both of their parents um, and the parents are disengaging and not playing out the drama over and over and over again. Well, that's nirvana. That that It couldn't be better. It doesn't get better than that, Janet. I really do encourage all of you to go on Janet's website, which is JP Coaching and Consulting. That's the Correct. website. Okay. Mm -hmm. JP, and it's in the show notes too, JP Coaching and Consulting. And you can read a, a much larger uh, synopsis that I just gave you of, of this program. And um, yeah, I've known Janet for a long time. This is, uh, you've advanced and- I, I love this course. I really, really love the good for you. Thank you, Judith, so much. Mm -hmm. um, yes, to read specifically about Atlas, you can do jpcoachingandconsulting.com backslash Atlas, and it'll take you right to that page. Beautiful. Janet, 
we have come to the end of our time and that was great. This has excited me more than any other program. I have to tell you, you've Thank hit you. all the nails on the head. You've addressed every aspect of the challenges parents go through uh, when divorcing and then launching into a co-parenting relationship. And man, if their kids are really young, that's a long road ahead. I know you said it's forever, but getting them to 18 years of age and then getting them to 21, if they're going to college, I mean, that's, that's a lot of time together and why not make it the best, right? Yes. And it really comes down to, yes, first, make it the best for your children. And second, you really do all divorce, uh, you really do all I'm going to say it one more time, Judith. <laughs> you do divorce You really do all deserve ah. to have peace. And we think about that at some point, even if we're so mad at our co-parent, if we're the one that's sad or mad, really digging in, I would ask you, is it really worth it? I mean, gosh, I'm a little older now than when I got divorced. And boy, if I could think about how often a frown is causes those lines in your forehead, <laughs> it's just that your happiness is just not worth all the anger and everything else. It's just really um, everyone. Diver di when you decide that you're going to be in two households, really getting to this place and moving forward is so important. It is. And honestly, there's an upside to this that people don't think about. And one of my clients just mentioned this to me the other day. And she said, we're going to do nesting. Anybody who's explored co um, uh, co-parenting schedule options knows what nesting is. You keep the kids in one house, you have a second place and the parents move in and out of the main house and in and out of the second house, you just rotate. Okay. So this one uh, mom just said, you know, I have a life back again. Yeah. Love my parent, my kids dearly, but I have no fear. Their dad's going to take care of them just fine. I get to party. I get to go out. I get to do things again. And I don't have to call and say I'm going to be a half an hour later than I said I was. There are real advantages. So even if you're the one that's been asked for the divorce, go through the anger, the denial, the bargaining, the depression, all that good stuff with the grief stages, and then get yourself in a place where you can see the advantage of having some time to yourself. Yes. Yes. Don't feel Until guilty. it's 18 years later and you're too old to have that fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There I are mean, advantages. even things like, um, and while I, you know, there were times, um, even things like sports activities, we want to teach your child how to do these things. But at a certain point, if they're not learning certain things, you may still want to be very active and have your own time to compete in, you know, an adult sports league. And it's, it's really hard when your children are with you all of the time when they're young to be able to do that. Yes. Yes. So enjoy that time off. It's yes. Good. It's good for your soul. Janet, thank you so much. I really appreciated this. It's always great to see you and it's always great to talk to you. Something new is happening in your life constantly. So <laughs> I appreciate everything that you've invested in, in the family law community. Thank you. Thank you, Judith. Thank you. Thank you for having me so much. It's And to have you as a partner in this journey in the Amicable Divorce Network is fabulous. Thank you. I, I've enjoyed everybody I've met. I know. They're really great. The attorneys are great. Um, I'm going to post an interview with attorney Scott Levin, turn mediator this week. And then we have Matthew coming up. And and you, so, yeah, we're, we're highlighting. And these are wonderful people that you'll enjoy tremendously. So you just go online in California. And uh, what do they... I, Amicable Divorce Network, California. Is that what they should do? Um, yes. And let me just, I'm looking at it right now. I think you can just say Amicable Divorce, actually. Um, and then search, um, 
let me just look divorce it um because I i've literally gotten calls I, you know yes it's funny when i started this podcast five and a half years ago <laughs> excuse me um I started using the word amicable, but I don't think that was a search word. It's now a search word. I was yes. blown away when I got calls. Uh, how did you hear from Northern California? I'm in LA. Yeah. They just went on and used amicable and here we popped up. So yes. this is great. So yes, you ju it's just amicable or divorce amicably.com. And it's all about the network and then it says find a professional and then you can just select your country because actually it's wait a also in england in, wait a minute wait okay england got that right divorce amicably.com that's what they type in divorce amicably.com I'm not a user. I use me, but I, I, so I've never really tried to do it. So thank you. Yes. Um, and that'll take you right to find a professional and then you can type in and you can find it. Lawyer, coach, uh, right. mediator, whatever. Okay, cool. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you everybody for listening. As always, I appreciate that you want to learn and that you're tuning in to learn because we have really great people who to help us. So uh, write me any comments. Uh, you can always reach me through the website, theamicabledivorceexpert.com. And as always, have an amicable day.